President Rodrigo Duterte expresses gratitude to Israel when he met with the Filipino community during his historic visit. The chief executive also takes the opportunity to apologize to former U.S. President Barack Obama. Victor Posada tells us why. President Rodrigo Duterte receives a warm welcome in Israel when he arrived Sunday for a four-day visit. In a speech during a meeting with the Filipino community, Duterte expressed gratitude to the government of Israel for treating Filipino workers well. He says he has yet to hear anything negative about the working conditions of overseas Filipino workers. There are around 28,000 Filipinos working in Israel and 24,000 of them are caregivers. Isa sa pinakamagandang lugar na pwede mo talagang mapuntahan and you are treated as a human being. Kaya if hindi naman minasama, if it is not really a, a wrong proposal, pardon me, but if Israel would want, ipadala ko doon lahat ang Pilipino dito. The chief executive also thanks the Israeli government for inviting him to visit their country, which is seen as historic and relevant. Duterte is the first Philippine president to visit the eastern country since diplomatic ties were established in 1957. A labor agreement between the Philippines and Israel is expected to be signed along with other deals during the course of Duterte's official visit. The labor agreement is expected to resolve the problem on expensive placement fees for OFW who wish to work in Israel. Meanwhile, Duterte also took the opportunity to apologize for cursing and criticizing former U.S. President Barack Obama who previously hit Duterte and his war on drugs. Well then, it would be uh, appropriate also to say at this time to Mr. Obama that uh, you are now a civilian and I am sorry for uttering those words. Uh, no, it was just a plain uh, Tokatis also like yours. We have learned our lessons very well. Nagano tayo, nagkakaintindihan tayo. So if it is uh, to your heart to forgive, you forgive. I have forgiven you. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue. The parents of Filipina death row inmate Mary Jane Reloso has asked the Supreme Court to allow their daughter to testify against her alleged recruiters through a deposition. But also as parents and lawyers believe that her written testimony will bolster the case against her alleged recruiters, Cristina and Sergio and Cristina Serio and Julius Lacanilao. Nung isang araw tumawag si Mayor Jane, nagtaka nga ako eh, nung bibitayin siya, hindi umiyak. Pero nung isang araw, Pero nung isang araw, umiiyak si Mayor Jane. Alam ba niyo sabi ni Mayor Jane, nanay tulungan niyo ko. Inip na inip na ako, humingi kayo ng tulong sa mga sumusuporta sa akin na tulungan nila ako na makalaya na dahil inip na inip na ako. The case was elevated to the Supreme Court after the Court of Appeals reversed the decision of the Nueva Ecija Trial Court Branch 88 allowing Veloz's camp to go to Jakarta, Indonesia and take her deposition. The appellate court agreed with the arguments raised by Serio and Lacanilao in saying that allowing Veloso's deposition would violate their right to confront the witness and allowing her to testify would also violate their right to have compulsory process to secure the attendance of witnesses and production of evidence guaranteed in the 1987 Constitution. Veloso's lawyers, however, maintain that the use of deposition in criminal proceedings is not prohibited under the rules of court and will not deprive the accused of their right to confrontation. Attorney Theodore Te resigns as Supreme Court spokesperson and assistant court administrator. My Bermudez tells us why. 
After almost five years of working as Supreme Court's Chief of Public Information Office and Assistant Court Administrator Attorney Theodore Te announces his resignation effective Friday, September 7. In his resignation letter, Te said he was co-terminus with ousted Chief Justice Maria Lourdes Sereno but was extended pending the appointment of a new Chief Justice and a new SC spokesperson. Te was appointed by Sereno in 2013. He became known in 1996 when he represented in oral arguments the petitioners who were urging the High Court to declare death penalty unconstitutional. He said his resignation will give Chief Justice Teresita de Castro a free hand to appoint a spokesperson that could help her implement media policies crafted by her office. De Castro has designated Attorney Maria Victoria Glores Tiguera as his replacement upon acceptance of his resignation. Meanwhile, court employees Employees donned blue during the flag racing earlier to show support to the new Chief Justice. De Castro turned emotional as she delivered her first speech as the new and first female SC Chief Justice. She called on employees not to be swayed by criticisms against the High Court. I'd like to say that people outside would like to judge us by what they hear or see from afar. But it is us the justices and the employees and officials of the court know what is happening inside the Supreme Court. She also asks other branches of government to respect the judiciary, move on and learn from the conflicts and misunderstandings of the past. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Tourism has released a partial list of complaint compliant hotels and resorts in Boracay Island. Meanwhile, the Tourism Department also advised tourists planning to visit Boracay Island to avoid doing chance reservations to prevent inconvenience. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Well, we have dedication efforts of the government as well as accreditation of establishments in Boracay are still ongoing. The Department of Tourism has released a partial list of compliant hotels and resorts on the island. 25 hotels and resorts are included in the first list of compliant establishments in Boracay Island who have complied with the requirements asked by the DENR, DILG, and DOT. According to the list released by the DOT on their Facebook page, this equates to 2,063 rooms that will be able to receive reservations for the reopening of the island on October 26. According to Attorney Helen Catalbas, the Regional Director of Department of Tourism 6, the department plans to release updated lists of compliant establishments on a weekly basis. We have four teams assigned in Boracay to conduct inspection of uh, the standards according to the OT accreditation sa mga establishments dito. Bisan DNR compliant ka, DILG compliant ka, you still have to to hurdle sang standard requirements sang Department of Tourism to get accredited. Meanwhile, the Tourism Department also advised tourists planning to visit Boracay Island to avoid making reservations per chance or walk-ins. Ako dito na sila, nakaabot na sa isla, dito pa lang sila magpa-book. No? Kay base bala, dito na sila sa isla, kag hindi galik compliant ang ilang um, hotels o kon resorts, kag hindi sila makakuha sang ila accommodation. Rather than leaving it per chance, the Tourism Department said it would be better to make sure that the establishments they're planning to stay in in Boracay is compliant to the requirements of the DNR, DILG, and DOT to avoid inconvenience. The Department of Tourism is targeting 5,000 foreign and local tourists for the reopening of the island on October 26. Vincent Arboleda UNTV News and Rescue, Boracay. Another round of oil price hike is set to hit consumers this week following an increase in the price of liquefied petroleum gas over the weekend. Let's find out more from Monoxon. Oil companies are expected to implement another set of fuel increases this week. Industry players estimate that prices of diesel will increase by more than 1 peso per liter while gasoline and kerosene by 90 centavos to 1 peso per liter.
This is the fourth consecutive week of fuel price hikes, which brought the net increase of diesel to almost 7 pesos, more than 6 pesos in diesel and almost 6 pesos in kerosene since January this year. The Department of Energy attributes the increase to the sanctions imposed by the United States on Iran amid plummeting demand brought by the trade tensions between the U.S. and China and a decline of the U.S. crude inventory. The looming oil price hike follows an increase on the price of liquefied petroleum gas or LPG products imposed beginning September 1. Solane hiked the price of its 11 kilogram cylinder tank by 20 pesos or 1 peso and 79 centavos per kilogram. According to DOE, the increase is due to the robust demand of LPG in the Middle East ahead of the winter season. The agency assures close monitoring of oil price movements to prevent unreasonable price adjustments and abuses. It also conducts regular inspections to ensure that gasoline stations are complying with the quality and quantity standards. So, sakali mang merong siguro silang nakikita na pang-aabuso, nandito naman ang Department of Energy, pero yun lang iparating sa amin, mag-file sila ng complaint. Consumers may also call the Oil Industry Management Bureau hotline number 8402130 for complaints on the quality of petroleum products. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Senator Panfilo Lacson believes that President Rodrigo Duterte should now focus on the economy amid surging market prices. Lacson says the president should address the inflation rate, which is expected to further rise. Data from the Department of Finance show that inflation likely accelerated at its fastest pace in more than nine years in August at 5.9%. Laxon fears that if the prices of basic commodities continue to rise, there might come a time when the poor could no longer access even the basic food. Tayong bilhin pati yung mga isda, ano? Uh, lahat alas yung mga basic uh, food sa table, eh hindi na kinakayang bilhin ng mga uh, lalo na yung sobrang mahirap natin kababayan. Pwede natin masabihin sabihin na kung wala mang food crisis pa, malapit na tayo magkaroon ng food crisis. Meanwhile, the Department of Agriculture is offering a reward of up to 250,000 pesos as it launches a new campaign against rice hoarders. Agriculture Secretary Manny Pinol also clarifies that he would rather return the stocks of weevil infested rice to the shipper after showing the public it is safe to be consumed. Ray Pelayo tells us why. It's no harm in eating weevil infested rice as long as it is properly washed and cooked. This is in response to the so-called book book challenge issued by some groups daring Pinol to eat a sample of the infested rice. Sa pangalang hugas, mayroon pa rin nakalutang na bukbok. Ayan, no? nakalutang na bukbok. So, hugasan na natin yan, pati sa kamay ko may bukbok. After the rice was cooked, Pinol scooped some of it on the plate, laden with a galunggong or round scud, and digged in to his meal with gusto. Ito po yung kanin na may bukbok. Pwede kainin. Okay, ito sa inyo. Galunggong ay formalin. Kain na natin. Walang formalin ito. However, Pinol clarified that the case is different when it comes to importation of rice infested with vivials. And this, these are two different stories. So pag-usapan natin yung NFA rice na may bukbok, dapat ba nating tanggapin? If I were the NFA administrator, I will not. I will return it to the shipper. Pinol also inspected rice storage last Friday in Barangay Ibayo, Marilaw, Bulacan, along with National Food Authority Administrator Jason Aquino. They first encountered difficulty in accessing the compound, but with the help of the police, they were able to get inside where they discovered thousands of imported rice from Thailand. Other warehouses had no accreditation posted at their gates. Though owners of the rice stocks refused to face the camera, they will be given due process to explain their still undistributed stocks. Ang tanong natin yan, bakit uh, pagkatapos na dumating yun yung mga bigas, eh, nasa bodega pa yan. Dapat binubuhos yun sa merkado. Dahil uh, alam natin na 
nagkakataasan yung presyo ng bigas sa merkado. Pinyol also warns to slap charges against those involved in rice hoarding. He also urges public to take part in the government's report a hoarder campaign by calling DA hotline 0292091117. Up to 250,000 pesos of reward money will be given to people whose tips will lead to successful operations. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte refuses to fire Pinyol and Aquino over rice woos in the country, saying he does not see any reason to dismiss them from office amid criticisms over rice issues. Maybe the laws are weak or unenforceable. All we have to do is to improve on those laws, uh, not necessarily fire people. And I don't... Uh, see any serious offense there. Uh, we have not really lost anything except that uh, uh, there's a, an aberration in the market. Calls for Pinyol and Aquino's resignation are mounting for their alleged incompetence in handling the rice crisis that includes insufficient supply, high prices, and weevil infestation of imported rice. In a statement, Secretary Pinyol thanked the President for his continued trust and confidence. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, News and Rescue, Philippines. Wishers in the United States have something to be excited about. Leslie Nongboen will tell us why. Seven-Five's reach is getting bigger and bigger as the famous Wish Bus is set to be launched in Hollywood in the USA. This is a huge leap off the station as it celebrates its fourth anniversary this year. Who would have imagined that a bus can bring the coolest musical experience to you? Well, they call it Pambansang Wish Bus, but now I think we don't want to call it just like Pambansang Wish Bus because medyo meron na po tayong uh, sabihin natin notch higher and continents farther. Conquering not only the national scene but the global scene. The Wish Bus is currently on its way from New York to Los Angeles. The Wish team, who started traveling on August 28, is now in Nevada. Because of its unique concept, the Wish Bus has been widely known in the Philippines and other countries. This is where the well-loved Wish-clusive videos are taken. Five remains the leading FM YouTube channel in the country, currently with 3.4 million subscribers and over 1 billion accumulated views. The Wish Bus will be launched at the Universal City Walk Hollywood, Los Angeles, California on September 7, 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, which is September 8 at 9 a.m. in Manila. Lasi Longboan, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. In other news, Australian missionary Patricia Fox wants to overturn the decision of the Bureau of Immigration ordering her deportation. In a petition filed Monday, Fox's legal team is urging the Department of Justice to review the order, which was previously upheld by the Immigration Bureau after denying her motion for reconsideration for lack of new argument. Fox has been accused of violating a Philippine policy that prohibits foreigners from joining political rallies. Sana this time around, finally, masagot naman ng uh, Department of Justice yung usapin na yun, which the Bureau of Immigration has evaded uh, several times sa mga, sa mga naging uh, uh, engagements natin sa kanila. No, and I was surprised because I've been here for 28 years and I haven't done anything different in the last couple of years, so I was quite surprised when this happened. 
The Department of Trade and Industry assures that no increase will be imposed on prices of basic commodities this coming holiday season. Monok Son tells us why. The Department of Trade and Industry will hold manufacturers to their commitment to delay the implementation of price hikes until the end of the year. DTI says the moratorium on price increases, which includes basic and prime commodities, is seen to help consumers cope with surging inflation ahead of the holiday season. The agency says some manufacturers have promised not to increase their prices for three up to nine months. So, inaasahan natin na itong, itong matapos yung three months ay tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung hindi paggalaw ng presyo. Kung sakali man na igagalaw ng manufacturers ang presyo ng BNPCs, uh, idadaan pa rin sa DTI yung request nila for price adjustment at i-approve natin bago ilabas sa markado at bagong, bago maging effective kung sakali mang may pagtaas. Authorities will also monitor prices of agricultural products in local markets to ensure that no unreasonable price increases will be imposed. Pagdating po ng Christmas season, yung bear season, talaga po ang demand ay tumataas. Hindi lang po sa consumer, maging sa mga processor dahil pinaprocess po nila yan. But of course, with the proper planning, with the proper what we call projection, magagawa naman po natin ng paraan yan at maiwasan din po yung pang-aabuso po. Last week, the DTI issued its latest expanded suggested retail price, which includes brands that were recently given a green light to hike prices. Mon Hoxon, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. A lawmaker from the farmers sector wants to use the legislative power of Congress to increase the NFA's buying price of Palay. Grace Kassin will tell us why. Anakpawi's party list representative Ariel Casila was dismayed after the National Food Authority said that the agency's buying price of palay is still at 17 pesos per kilo. This has been the NFA's problem for several years. That's why local farmers refuse to sell their palay to the agency. While private rice traders buy palay from farmers at 19 to 25 pesos per kilo, NFA Administrator Jason Aquino said he already asked the NFA Council to increase the buying price of palay up to 19 to 22 pesos per kilo, but the Council has yet to decide on this. Aquino notes that even though he is the head of the Council, all members should agree first before implementing the proposal. But despite this, NFA Council maintained that they cannot just increase the buying price due to the high inflation rate. Gumawa po ng technical working group ang, ang NFA Council uh, to study this proposal. This urged Congressman Casilao to use the power of the Congress to overrule the NFA Council. Can Congress, as part of his legislative power, to overrule, to make a law declaring this price, buying price of NFA, not to wait for that committee na mga insensitive ang mga nandun. Edwin Paraluman, a representative of farmers in the NFA Council, calls on the government to support the farmers. He said he is saddened by the reports that the farmers in the country are being treated this way. Ang mga magsasaka ang pinakamahirap na parte ng Pilipinas, magsasaka. Tingnan niyo ang buhay ng magsasaka. While we are the one producing food, kami ang pinakamahirap. So, inihiling namin yan na medyo taasan na lang konti. Bakit hindi ba pwede yun? Grace Kasin, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. Several lawmakers criticized the Department of Public Works and Highways on the state of the implementation of the department's infrastructure projects. Nel Marie Bohok will tell us why. Senator Panfilo Lacson presented before the budget deliberation of some pending infrastructure projects of the Department of Public Works and Highways. These include the road projects in Sariaya, Quezon, which was suspended in May 2016 due to the right-of-way issue. Meanwhile, a portion of the department's road improvement project in Labay, Lacamen Provincial Road was buried due to landslide last month. According to Senator Lacson, it seems that the project has not been planned. These are just some of the projects that the Senator thinks the DPWH is remiss of. Kung hindi magkagamit yung kalsada, kasi nga natabunan, taxpayers man yan, hindi ba tayo nanghinaing sa pera ng bayan? 
Pero natin lahat dyan ah. But DPWH Secretary Mark Villar takes defense on the issue. These are not repaired to the cost uh, of the taxpayer. Uh, these are the responsibility of the contractors. According to Senator Lacson, millions of pesos are at stake and are being wasted because of the suspended projects. The senator warned the agency that he will push for a slash in the department's budget if they fail to give assurance of solving the right-of-way issue in the implementation of their projects. Mas magihigpit kami, ako in particular, na kailangan settle talaga yung ROW issues bago simulan o bago ponduhan yung proyekto. The secretary however explained that they are not just facing a simple right-of-way issue. But of course, pagdating sa RFW, when you say that, do you permit to enter ang kailangan para lang makapagsimula? The senator asked the DPWH to submit the complete list of projects that were stopped and the reasons for the suspension. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. The UNTV Cup Season 7 kicks off tonight at the Smart Araneta Coliseum. This season, two new teams will join the league and nearly 10 million pesos in cash prizes will be given to their chosen charities. Bernard Dadis will tell us why. The League of Public Servants opens its seventh season tonight enlisting 12 teams to compete in this edition. These are the AAP Cavaliers, DA Food Masters, BOJ Justice Boosters, JSIS Furies, Judiciary Magis, Malacanang PSC Kamao, NHA Builders, PNP Responders, Ombudsman Grab Busters, Senate Defenders, and two new teams, the Philippine International Trading Corporation, or PITC Global Traders, and Seasons 1 and 2 Alumnus, Bill Health Plus. The championship prize this season is 4 million pesos and 2 million pesos for the runner-up team. Overall, the prize money reaches up to 10 million pesos which will be given away to the team's elected beneficiaries. The UNTB Cup, a play for charity league, is the brainchild of BMPI CEO and public service advocate Kuya Daniel Rason. It aims to bring camaraderie among public servants in the government through their common passion for basketball. With the main sponsorship of Brother Eli Soriano of the Members Church of God International, last season saw around 8.5 million pesos cash prizes awarded to the team's chosen charities. Bernard Dallis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines.